In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can let users generate PDFs of specific elements in your bubble app. For example, here we have an element which is basically an invoice. And if I click this generate PDF of invoice, we get this downloaded PDF of the invoice itself. I'm also going to show how you can create PDFs of multiple elements. For example, here we have a table and here we have a group of logos. And if we click this button, we're going to get a PDF of both of those elements combined. I'll also show how you can put in some custom settings to download PDFs in custom formats. So for example, maybe you want to generate a URL link. Maybe you want to put in margins on the top and on the bottom, and maybe you want to display it in landscape rather than in portrait. And finally, I'm going to show how you can save PDFs to your database. If we click this button here, we're going to get the usual download. I've also generated a URL for this. But if we look into our bubble database, we'll see that this has been saved down in the database itself. I've opened the editor up for public access, and I will put a link to the demo page in the description. So if you wish, you can view the editor by clicking on the View Editor button. With that out of the way, let's begin getting into the weeds of the demo itself. And the very first thing we're going to need to do is to configure the PDF Creator plugin. The PDF Creator plugin is a plugin I've built myself. It is a paid plugin. And if you'd like to get it, what you'll need to do is go to the plugin section of your bubble editor search for PDF Creator by going to the Add Plugins tab and searching for PDF Creator. Once you've done that, we need to take two steps. The first thing you need to do in order for the PDF Creator plugin to work properly is go to the Settings tab of your Bubble Editor. Under the General tab here, you're going to need to ensure that the expose the option to add an ID attribute HTML elements is ticked. Once you have that ticked, what you're going to find is that every element on the page will now have an option on it to add an ID attribute. So for example here, you can see for the group invoice element that I've created here, I've added the ID attribute invoice to this. And we're going to use this to identify which element specifically we're going to PDF. So you do need to tick that box. The second thing you're going to need to do is on whatever page of your app you're creating PDFs from, you're going to need to drop the PDF creator element onto the page. It's not actually going to be visible on page load, but it does need to be there for the plugin to function properly. You can see here that I've dropped it into the page here. I'm just going to do it again. If you go down to your bubble app, and I can see I have two versions of it, and that's because I have the test version still installed. So we'll just get rid of that. If you go down to your visual elements, you can drop a PDF creator anywhere on the page like that. And again, it's not going to be visible when you load the page. It just needs to be there for the plugin to function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a PDF for one specific element. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take four steps. We're going to need to add an ID attribute to the element who you wish to PDF. So I've created this element here called group invoice. And as we already saw a second ago, I've added the ID attribute invoice to it simply by typing invoice into the ID attribute box for that element. 
Second step we're going to need to take is to create a workflow that will be triggered when a button is clicked or some other action is taken. So in this example here, I've created a workflow for generate PDF of invoice. I'm going to redo that again. And then we're going to create an action using one of the specific plugin actions that will now be available to us. So I'm going to rebuild this workflow just to show how it works. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to start edit workflow. I'm going to delete the existing workflow and I'm going to create a new one. And the workflow we're looking for is under element actions and it's under the PDF creator actions. And the one we're looking for is the only action available. It's called generate a PDF creator. You can see here we have a number of options. The element field here is referencing the PDF creator element that we dropped on the screen. The ID attribute, this is going to be linked to the ID attribute we just gave that group invoice. So I'm just going to type invoice in here and that will help Bubble identify which element we want to PDF. We can name the file something. I'm going to call this my demo PDF. Auto download means whether you want to automatically download it and it show up on the bottom of the screen um, or whether you just want to generate it in the background. Most of the time you're going to want to have this as yes. You'll see here the default options are yes and no. Scale I go into some detail on this on the documentation, but essentially we have options here between one and 10. The higher the number we take, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, the higher the quality of the output PDF, but it will take longer to generate and it will also be a bigger file size. I recommend starting with a two and then seeing how you go from there. For orientation, we can have either portrait or landscape. This must be spelt specifically. So I'm leaving it as portrait for now. And then we can also play around with margins, which we will do in a minute. But let's go back to our bubble app and refresh the page. And let's click the generate PDF of invoice button. We should trigger the workflow that we just created. And you can see there, my demo PDF has downloaded. We'll open that up. And you can see we had a nice PDF of the invoice that we created. The next thing we're going to do is generate a PDF for multiple elements. So we have two separate elements here. We have this table that I've created, which is essentially a repeating group. And we also have this group of logos. Just to show you how I put the ID attributes on these elements, we'll go back to our editor. And you can see that I've called this group here, this element here, I should say. If we look at the parent element of that, and in fact, we need to look at the parent element of that again. So let's just find it in here. And in fact, it was actually on a reading group. My apologies. I've given this the ID attribute table. And then if we look at group logos, or group U, which contains both of these logo elements. I've given this the IG attribute logos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate the workflow that's associated with this button. So I'm going to go to this button, start edit workflow, and I'm going to delete this existing one. And again, the first thing we're going to need to do is go to element actions, and generate a PDF creator. Once again, we can reference PDF creator A, which is that element that we dropped on the screen earlier on. What we're going to need to do here is put in the ID attributes of the two elements separated by a comma and a space that we want to PDF. Important to note that this will not work if you do not put in the comma and the space. There has to be a comma directly after the first ID attribute and there has to be a space before the second. I'm going to call this file table and logos. We're going to auto download it. I'm going to put the scale as two and I'm going to leave the rest as they are. So let's refresh our bubble app and see how that works out. Okay, so let's click that button. And you can see we've downloaded that file. Let's open it up.
and you can see we have our two elements here. We have our table followed by our logos. Now, you may notice that it's a bit cramped. There's no margin on either side. So what we can do is we can use some input fields to allow the user to describe how they want their PDF to be output. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use these various layout and output options here to decide how I want my PDF to look. You can see here that we have an input field for ID attributes. So what this is effectively going to allow the user to do is input the ID attributes of the elements they want a PDF. So for example, I have invoice and table here at the moment, but instead I'm actually going to want table and then logos. Orientation, put this in landscape if I want it. I'm going to leave this in portrait for now. But what we can do is put in some margins. So I'm going to put 20 at the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. I'll come on to this page break option in a minute because it's a bit different. And then we can also give a custom name to our file. So I'm going to call this test multiple elements. Just to show you how this works in terms of the workflow action that's associated with it. So when the button save PDF custom options is clicked, which is this button here, I'm still using the generate PDF creator A action. What I'm doing is instead of typing in ID attributes, I'm using input ID attributes value. That's this one here. As you might guess, input file name is gonna be this one here. So that's where the name is coming from. Auto download. So you might remember our options here are yes or no. So what I'm actually doing here is I've created a custom state on the page itself. So if I go to page index and I go to the information here, I have two custom states. They're both yes or no with the default being yes. One is generate URL, which we're gonna show in a second separately. But in the second one, which I'm referencing here is automatically download. So that basically describes whether or not you want the PDF to be automatically downloaded to the bottom of the screen as we've been doing to now. And the way I'm deciding whether or not that is chosen is this little icon box here. So when this is ticked, it's going to be automatically downloaded. When it's not, it's not. And we'll go back to our workflow tab. You'll see that when that custom state is showing a yes, it is going to be automatically downloaded. Scale, as I mentioned, that's a scale between one and 10. For the orientation, I'm using the orientation dropdowns value, which is this one here, either portrait or landscape. And then I'm using all the input margin fields for this one here. I'll come on to page break separately in a minute. So if we click this PDF, save PDF button, what we'll get is exactly the same as last time. but instead there should be margins on the side, top and bottom of the output PDF. And you can see that is indeed the case. Margins at the top, side and bottom. So that's worked out as expected. And I just wanna go back to that example and examine this page break input that we have. At the moment, this is actually hard coded as a yes in our demo. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change that to input page breaks value and its option, which is either a yes or a no. And then what I'm going to do is just refresh the page first of all. And then let's say we wanted to show a PDF that had the table first, the invoice second, and the logos third. So we'd have table, invoice, logos, and let's say we had a really high top margin, of let's say 180, or maybe 120, and we'll see if that works, and a bottom margin of 60. And if we have the page break set as no, what we're gonna see, and I'm just gonna click on this for a minute because we'll come on to it separately, but if we click on the save PDF button, and we open up that file that's just been created, what we'll see is the invoice is actually split over two pages. That's just because the higher margin at the top means that there's not enough room for it to fit on it. So what this page break option does is if this is the case, it's gonna start the invoice 
on a new page. So let's go back to here, and this time we will click yes for page break. And we'll click save PDF again. And if we open that up, what we should see is it's going to start the invoice on the new page. And you can see there we have table, then we have invoice, which now takes up the full page. And it's actually doing the same for logos, which there's not enough space for it on this page as well. So that's a good use of the page break field. The next thing I want to look at is this generate URL link option. So I kind of gave a preview of this earlier, but if we go to our design tab, I mentioned that I'd created two custom states. We've already looked at the automatically download one, and then the other one is this generate URL. So what this is effectively doing is when this is a yes, and again, I'm using custom states to decide whether it's yes or no, and that's based on clicking on this icon group here. But what's happening is this pop-up is going to be shown only if that custom state is set to yes, and the link in this pop-up references PDF creators A URL. So every time we generate a new PDF, it's going to create a URL for that PDF and it's going to attach it to element PDF creator A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how exactly that's triggered in the workflow actions. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the two of these here and I'll recreate them. These are custom events that come with the plugin. So if we go to elements and we say a PDF creator recorded, that essentially means every time a new PDF is generated, what we're going to do is we're going to show an element element is going to be pop-up URL but we're only going to show this when the index is generate URL is yes so this is actually a bit of a workaround because the URL has been generated every time a PDF has been created but we're just showing the pop-up that reveals it when the custom state is set to yes so let's refresh our page here and I'll show you how that looks. We just get rid of these old ones. And you can see here, uh, we have just invoice and table in this example. Generate URL link is set to yes. And what we'll do is untick the automatically download one. Then we'll go to save PDF. We have nothing coming up at the bottom of the screen here, but we do have this link being revealed. We click on this we'll see that pdf as a url and this is also how we save things to our database so when we click this save pdf to database what we're actually doing is we're generating a pdf creator a like we have in all the previous examples and then in my database I've created this data type called uh, saved PDFs. And if we do workflow, what we're going to do is data, create a new thing. We're going to do save PDFs. We're going to do PDF URL link is equal to PDF creator A and its URL. So what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this as well. Refresh the page. And when we click on save PDF to database, what we should get is a PDF generated as usual. And we can see that's happening there. We're going to get the pop up with the URL link. Then in addition to that, we should also see within our database under all save PDFs here, we should see a new PDF link, which we have here. And if we copy that URL and paste it in here, This is one more way we can access it. So that's how you can generate PDFs in your bubble app. Like I mentioned, I'm going to put a link to this in the description below and you'll be able to view the editor if you'd like. And if you do have any other questions, please do let me know in the comment section.